This needs to stop. We're going to be talking about a recent article that suggests that the Chicago Bulls should trade Kobe White as soon as possible. We're going to be talking about what this means for Kobe White and also what this means for the Chicago Bulls. This is your host, Rico Greenhow. You found yourself on another episode of Bulls Digest. And so today we are talking about an article that suggests that uh, Kobe White should be traded uh, sooner rather than later and so this particular article you can find it uh, on the internet right now the chicago bulls need to trade kobe white as soon as possible and so before we jump into what this article talked about i just want to say that with kobe white and with io because i think this article talks on both of those players i think that both of them are definite franchise pieces for the chicago bulls i think that you know with kobe white and io i think that they're both players that will help establish an identity for the Chicago Bulls and I think that if you're going to make some noise in the NBA you have to have an identity and so with Kobe White I think that he is set to have the biggest benefit now that DeMar DeRozan is not with us I think that now that he is going to be playing off the ball you can see that his point total is going to go up a bit more I think that most that have watched him would say or suggest that like when you let him play off the ball that's where Kobe White is very natural Next, I think his playmaking ability is going to take another level. And with the pace of play the Chicago Bulls are expected to play with a little bit faster, I think that you're going to see those assist numbers go up. Defensively, I think he competes his tail off defensively. And I think just because uh, he wants to compete, I'm not saying he's the best defender, but I can see himself getting into more steals and also to more rebounds with that. And so with that being said, I don't want to trade uh, Kobe White. White, and I wouldn't want to trade Io because I, I love both of those players and I think they're, they're going to be great for the Chicago Bulls and they're going to take another leap. But what this article suggests is that the Chicago Bulls may lose them in free agency for absolutely nothing and that this extension rule uh, is going to be one of the reasons or the main reason why the Chicago Bulls would want to trade Kobe White and Io now while they are at their top as far as being a tradable asset. So the, they've got the highest amount of value around them right now and we should trade them going into the trade deadline because we we may not have this type of value around them. And so this uh, particular piece is talking about the 140% extension rule. And it says 140% of the player's last salaried year as the calculation point is used in this extension. And it also talks about how the team can use the league's average salary and then go off this 140%, uh, whichever one is greater to go ahead and extend this player. Now, what this means is that with Kobe White, he's making $12 million right now. Under this particular rule, he is set to make $18 million. And I just talked about how he is potentially going to go up with his statistics across the board, which suggests that that is going to be a very team friendly deal. And I'm pretty sure Kobe White is not going to want to get into a team friendly deal again. And he is going to probably command upwards to 30 million or more. More importantly, I love what this article talks about with where the money is going to be at by the time he does reach free agency. It says that uh, he is in fact going to run into a situation where the money is going to be at the non-tax mid-level exemption money by the time uh, you know the contract were to come up. So that $18 million that's going to be uh, close to that non-tax mid-level exemption, which is why he more than likely is not going to sign this extension. And they talk about the fact that yes, $30 million or more is probably what the asking price is going to be for Kobe White. So with that being said, I love what CHG had to say because they extend a little bit more on this point they talked about it four weeks ago and here's the thing if the Chicago Bulls are going to ride with Kobe White and Io which I would love for them to do that means that they're going to have to evaluate this young talent right now which means moving players out of the way making making sure that they're getting the max playing time and the opportunity to grow so you can properly evaluate them and so that means if you're going to go ahead and extend giddy now you're running into this situation where you're going to let Lonzo uh, go ahead. He's going to be off the books uh, here after this season. Let's say you don't move on from Vooch. 
And so that means that between Vooch and Lonzo, you're looking at uh, combined about $50 million. Now let's say that you haven't moved off of Zach Levine, who I think is going to be in his player option by this time. Then he's close to $50 million, all right? Then you have uh, Jalen Smith. You have Patrick Williams, who's going to be in the third year of his deal. And then you have Manus Buzelis and you have Julian Phillips. Those are the players that are more than likely going to be on the books, along with Josh Giddy, if you make that decision for him. All right, so now you're going to have the money to go out there and get Kobe White. And let's say that you think that he is going to be a franchise player and you pay him max dollars and you also bring Io back. Now, if you've constructed the roster properly, moving into their free agency, now you're in a situation where you've opened up some cap space and now you can maybe bring some free agents over to help Kobe White and Ayo and this young core not just be, I'm talking about the sixth seed in the East, but I'm talking about possibly contending to get out of the Eastern Conference and maybe make some noise in an NBA Finals. You're hoping that that core takes that type of leap and they're able to add some players to go along with them um, to go ahead and take a major, major leap. Now, if you have not constructed this roster properly, what's going to happen is, well, we're going to run into the same situation that we are currently in right now with Zach Levine. We went out, we offered him the max money, pretty much to be a max player, I should say. We would do the same with Kobe White. We don't construct the roster properly. Now, Kobe White's in a situation where 72 out of his 101 teammates are no longer in the NBA. Now we're going to be in that situation where we're going around in this circle, where we're going to be middle of the bottom of the Eastern Conference. We're going to be blaming the franchise that we signed uh, Kobe White for all this money. And, you know, he's going to look uh, bad and all this stuff like that. But it's more to do with how the Chicago Bulls really built around him moving forward. So that's another thing that they're going to have to consider. And if you are going to move um, both Kobe White and Io right now at this next trade deadline, what that is saying is that you're taking back assets. The team is going to be um, it's going to be pretty terrible. All right. And you're going to be banking on the fact that these assets that you're getting are going to turn into something that you're essentially saying we're going to take three or four steps back in order to take 10 steps forward forward in the future. So with that being said, I'll leave it to you, the viewers. What do you think the Chicago Bulls should do? Should they trade Kobe White and Io before they run into these contract extensions and we could lose them after they've de developed with us, um, you know, in our system with our team for absolutely nothing? Or do you feel like, you know, hey, we just go ahead and we ride this thing out, we build around them properly, and we make some noise potentially in the East if we believe in this core. Um, but either way, you don't want the Chicago Bulls to go ahead and say, let's, let's say that they do decide to move them and it's after the trade deadline. If they do that, then we're going to run into the same situation of what we did with DeMar DeRozan and Alex Caruso, where it could be too late once we um, go ahead and make a uh, or put them out there to be traded. Uh, because let's say that they either get injured or, you know, their season goes down, then that asset, uh, the value of it is going to go down. So let me know in the comments what you think the Chicago Bulls should do. And so I just want to thank you out there for watching the videos, liking and sharing. It means a lot to me as we try to reach our goal of 5,000 subscribers. And before we jump out of here, I just want to say that 65.5% of you that watch the videos are not subscribed to the channel. So make sure you continue to throw it off the glass and reverse slam dunk on that subscribe button for me as it means a lot to me. And even though we are talking about trading players who I think could be uh, foundational pieces for the Chicago Bulls, I'm still saying go Bulls and I'll see you on the next one. Peace.